I got thinking about it during the last week's video. I was editing and looking at camber, and I have some more ideas that I've never heard of before in dirt racing about camber and how it works and how maybe we can think a little differently uh, on some spindles to get more traction in the front end. So I'm going to do a video on that and I'd like the feedback on that if anybody else has any ideas towards this. But let's roll the intro and let's talk a little more about camber. I've spent the last 30 plus years working on race cars, building race cars, and racing cars. And I'm here to help you better understand racing technology. I guess the first thing I want to talk about is just a little bit of refresher. I have a whole video on camber and how it works, but just to make sure we're all on the same page in case some people haven't seen that other video i believe camber works basically if you stand up like a trampoline and you push on the center of it the tire stretch will give you traction but if you camber that the more camber you get into that trampoline, think of it as pushing down on the tire and the tire will bulge. If you have no camber in it, there's going to be a bigger bulge as that tire tries to slide into the corner. The inner part of the tire, let's say the right front and you're turning left, will have a big bulge and it won't have as much pressure on it and as much traction as if you tip that. The, the bulge will come out of the tire, so that's camber. And what's actually happening here, if you think about kingpin inclination on camber, let's say you're running a six degree spindle on your right front and as the camber goes in, the kingpin of that spindle is actually aiming towards the ground. And actually the camber, I believe, kinematically is actually helping to push the lower control arm and the tire into the ground as the car rolls over. The camber effect of it pushing diagonally like that where the you know, on a right front if i'm like behind the car and you're pushing into that tire on the right front with six degrees seven degrees camber or whatever you're actually pushing that control arm into the ground and adding traction but now let's look what happens on the other side on the left front you have, let's say, a 6, 7, 10 degree spindle on the left front. As that thing cambers out and your car drops and rolls, it's actually the spindle kingpin is actually either pushing up or it's pushing straight across because the, the kingpin of the spindle will kind of run with the camber and you want to keep camber in your left front the opposite way you know if your camber on the right front's aimed like this you want your left front when the car's rolled over aimed a little like this too probably is not as much as the right front but you want camber to stay in that left front and our cars are so tight now that's why we're getting into the slide job mentality because the cars are so tight. So let's concentrate on getting the cars to steer better is my opinion has been for a long time. We need to keep those left front tires on the ground, keep the aero dependency off of it by making the tires do 
more of the work. We're concentrating so much on aero, somebody takes our aero off, all of a sudden cars don't steer no more. I'm saying the cars are too tight and they ain't going to steer to begin with, and any little arrow that we get there is just helping tremendously. We should be concentrating more on just getting the cars to steer properly. But now, now I thinking about it last week and I was editing my video and it just kind of dawned on me if the same thing kinematically is happening towards the right front where that kingpin is pushing and pushing the control arm and the shock and everything and the tire into the ground with the use of camber, why couldn't we do that on the left front? Why couldn't we actually tip the kingpin inclination on the left front to a 25, 30 degrees of camber? So when that camber is in that tire, instead of the kingpin being straight up or, you know, even tipped like this maybe a little bit, what happens if we tipped it down? What happens if the camber pulling into that tire actually pushed the kingpin access into the ground and just similar to the right front, but with the left front deal? We are using the kinematic forces to help plant that tire. See, what else is going on there is your wheel width in the front end and the wheel width in the rear end make a big difference on how those tires align on whether your car is loose or tight. If your rear end is narrower than your front end, then the car is going to be tight. If the front end is narrower than the rear end, then the car is going to be loose. So we always have a stance in our cars where the front end is wider in wheel stance than the rear end. And I think what we could do with the camber is concentrate on scrub radius also. Scrub radius, if you draw a line through the, your kingpin and call it the kingpin axis like I did, where that falls on the middle of your tire determines when you steer your tire where the tire moves in and out. If you have a big split on the kingpin radius, let's say your kingpin hits the ground and it's a foot from the center of the tire. When you rotate that, the, the tire is actually going to move in and out and make your wheel stance narrower or shorter in the front. The closer that kingpin hits the ground to the center of the tire, the tire will move less. So if we put a 25 or 30 degree kingpin into that front, that will get that kingpin hitting the ground very close to the center of the tire. The tire won't move in or out or even forward or backward. That's another thing that happens is when you get that radius and you steer, the larger that thing is, it will actually move forward and backward and in and out as you steer your car. I did a video and I've been talking about this a long time and the radiuses that we run on our race cars are so much undervalued. Nobody thinks about much what's happening when stuff runs on a radius. When you put a rod end in there and everything rotates, all your four link rods in the back, your panard bar, everything runs at a radius. The steering arms in the front run at a radius which gives us Ackerman, and everything happens on a radius. So actually, with the radius 
being kept more the same from having that kingpin at a big angle and that that tire is actually the scrub radius on that is very small where that kingpin inclination actually hits closer to the center of the tire the tire will actually just pivot off the kink off that center of the tire and not shrink the wheel width in the front and not move the tire back and forth as you steer. But now here's the bad part is caster wedging. When you get a large kingpin like that and you start putting a lot of caster in there, you start getting a lot of caster wedging. As you steer one way, it's going to raise the frame. As you steer the other way, it's going to lower the frame. And I don't believe in caster wedging. So I believe possibly that if you get a big kingpin inclination like that, like I'm talking about to get the force pushing down on the tire, you're going to almost have to reduce the caster in the left front to almost zero or maybe a half a degree, just enough to put some stability in that tire. You don't want the tire wobbling around. The uh, asphalt guys are notorious for actually uncastering the front and tipping the, the top forward. Well, I'm talking about maybe a zero or just enough caster in the left front to give the car stability. It's um, once you get a big camber or a big kingpin inclination in there and you start tipping that thing back, the caster wedging, every time you twitch that wheel, that right rear tire or the right front tire is going to feel that moving around the car. I've always been a big proponent on keeping the cars as stable as possible. So when you get your wheel load set in the corners, you actually know what's going on with the car more or less. The more you get these little trick things, you know, to upset your car, like people, I hear people talk about wheel loads increasing or decreasing on the right rear by 30 pounds. Oh, I put three more, 30 more pounds of wheel load in it. Yeah, but your car is moving around, you're sawing at the wheel. That right rear tire is gaining or losing that wheel load. It's just this whole wheel load thing just drives me nuts. But uh, I think that may be a way to keep traction in the front end and still getting our tires um, to give enough camber to actually stretch that. And then that control arm will push into the ground with another with enough kingpin. So I want everybody to kind of think about that. Let me know in the comments section what you think and I'm interested to hear opinions on this because I don't know everything. I just get ideas and I get thinking about things and try to lead a conversation a little bit. But I'd love to hear some other people's opinions on this. Let's go on over the drawing board. I have a couple drawings I'd like to show you to kind of illustrate this a little bit and hopefully kind of get a visual to it um, for everybody to kind of think about. Okay, here are a couple drawings illustrating what I'm talking about. If you picture the car going in a left-hand turn, you're going to get a thrust on the right front of the tire pushing on the control arm and on the, the kingpin axis. This is your kingpin axis. It runs through the center pivots of both of your ball joints. That determines your kingpin axis. When you get a thrust like this, and this axis is aimed towards the ground or towards the lower control arm, I think it's actually pushing pressure into the lower control arm. 
kinematically. There's a lot of stuff going on up there. And, you know, you get spring tension and you get elastic roll centers. But at a kinematic point, I think there is something going on here. On the left front, then, this is what I had in mind. Now, think of a normal kingpin axis like you would have on your right front. This would be turned up to about 6 degrees. I got this exaggerated to kind of show you what a 25 or 30 degree would be. Instead of this kingpin axis being turned up like this and it actually pushing across the car, the more you tip this kingpin axis, the more pressure it's pushing into the ground. Now this is the left front, so the thrust from the tire from the momentum is trying to push this way. So I'm saying it pushes this way and pushes this lower control arm into the ground. You know, it, like I said, there's a lot of factors that go on there. And now you can kind of see that turning this also gets this point where it hooked to the ground closer to the center of your tire. Maybe your tire center would be over here with a less kingpin axis, it would bring it further out. But the more kingpin axis you put into it, the closer it would be to the center of the tire. This is just a theory I had. Let me know in the comments what you think. If you guys had any better visual about it, if you agree, um, let me know. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. YouTube gives me lots of love the more likes and subscribers I get. So if you like what you see, subscribe, hit the like button, and I will see you in the next video.